Welcome back everyone to Stay In Your Lane. I'm your host, John Maley, brought to you by Triple T Transport. Today I've got a new guest, gentleman I've been communicating with, I wanted to share with all of you. Uh, Tom Moore, uh, Thomas, say hi. Uh, he is the founder of Auto Scheduler. Yeah, I'm the founder of three companies and Auto Scheduler is just one of them. Uh, Auto Scheduler actually schedules automatically the operations inside a warehouse. Um, you know, what does it mean for, for carriers? Well, it means that when the truck arrives, that we've got the labor to unload it. Uh, and most importantly, it prioritizes things in and out of the warehouse in such a way that uh, the warehouse meets its service goals and you know, inside its transportation constraints. This works for warehouse management systems, and it allows you to streamline all processes throughout the warehousing system. Yeah, and essentially uh, today warehouse management systems probably are, are a little misnamed. They don't manage anything. They just keep accounting of uh, inventory and people and, and tasks. And okay. the person who really makes all the decisions is the guy on the, out on the dock. Sometimes people call him the pilot who says, oh, I'm going to load this truck now. I'm going to unload this truck at three o'clock. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to pick these cases, et cetera. He's making, he or she is making all those decisions and those decisions um, have distinct repercussions. The problem is it's a very difficult job. I mean, you think about it. You've got 30, 50 people running around in the warehouse. You've got people who are qualified to do certain things um, on tow motor and others who don't. You've got folks um, who, who are uh, able to pick cases and, and, put them in, in, in staging, but do we have enough staging space? Do we have enough dock doors? Is this dock door occupied? Is this dock door blocked because the, uh, you know, the product uh, is there, but the, the carrier hasn't arrived yet? All these kinds of things require superhuman ability. And then you've got to say, oh, at the end of my shift, I hand it off to the next guy and the next guy makes a decision on what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And he might do completely different decisions, okay? So how do we maintain that consistency across the whole whole environment? Yeah, that sounds pretty impressive. Um, I, I know that you have some, some very successful arrangements with, with shippers and manufacturers, so I know it works. Um, just to be clear, a lot of our larger shippers are maintaining a, a pool of trailers and they are trying to to make sure that, that they use that pool of, of trailers to fill in around live loads, right? Okay. And, and um, it's funny, I think you and I were both at the uh, Four Kites conference and yep. um, that conference, basically, they, they came and said, well, we can develop this new tool that says, hey, this truck's going to be late. So we know it's going to be late. So, so we'll just adjust the appointment time three hours and make it three hours later. Well, great, except what if the warehouse can't handle it? What if there's some issues um, with the product on that truck is needed for the shipments on five other outbound trucks? What are we going to right. do to those? Are we going to hold them? Are we going to ship them without the product? You know, all these kinds of decisions have to be made. And, and that's a gap that we fill and frankly, it'd be very difficult for a person to understand the repercussions of, you know, one product missing on a, on a shipment um, or one shipment missing and that product's not able to be applied to five other shipments. I mean, it's really, really difficult thing to calculate by hand, but you've got a system that can do it for you. Uh, that gives you a huge advantage. No, I, I agree. I think that uh, we've seen a shift I'd say the probably past five years especially, the warehouse windows for receiving and shipping are set and they're 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 difficult to work with with a lot of the food service shippers, whether I'm hauling refrigerated and dry or or dairy or dairy deli items. You know, dairy deli items they say, oh, we receive those from eight till midnight. Doesn't matter if you're if you miss your appointment, you're a reschedule. That's always a challenge, you know, and, and um, every 
operation seems to run a little differently and there's no standard approach to this. And, and frankly, there's no standard approach to how you even get the appointment in the first place. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's really a mess out there uh, and somebody needs to work on that, cleaning up that mess. Well, I think this would do a lot of cleaning it up, the, the auto scheduler tool for the warehouses. It, it, it helps a lot, but we need to then coincide, make this coincide with the appointment schedule that frequently is in the, either the ERP or the TMS. Uh, and we need to tie that back in, into those, um, those, those systems uh, so it's all seamless. And, and frankly, there's been slow adoption of that. Um, everybody sort of thinks of the warehouse as being its own little fiefdom and you know, of course, it doesn't impact anybody else, right? Uh, well, it does impact. Yeah, it does. <laughs> of course, it does. Mm -hmm. But so, you know, this I mean, is this is the silo approach. I mean, carriers unfortunately are treated as a completely separate silo, and and um, uh, only when there's a big shortage do we start to worry about. Oh, gee, you know, how do I make sure I look after my carriers? Rest of the time, it's yeah, you know, we want to be nice to the carriers, but no one fully comprehends the the impact of, of of the things that can happen at the dock, the things that can happen when we are scheduling um, operations, the things that can happen when we write our own orders to move things. So you know, let's make sure we, we have people um, who are more invested in, in carrier success all the time, not just at, at bad times. Well, I think the industry's always been hurry up and wait, right? For a carrier, yeah, you're here. You have a 9 a.m. It's 9 a.m. Uh, go on out there. We'll come get you when we're ready for you. But then you didn't have a 9 a.m. Right? Right. If I, I'm here at nine. I'm ready to load at nine. Uh, I should be going into a dock, right? No, that's not how it works. You know, I, I have um, a little different approach to something that. that really annoys me and and you know I probably shouldn't admit this but I have uh, on occasions handed the uh, the person who's making me wait my wallet and said look I'm going to turn my back take as much money out of there as you like don't have a lot of money in my wallet but you know take as much money as the person shakes their head he says you, you what do you mean he says I said you have no problem stealing my time why would you have problems stealing my money right so it becomes the the stalemate of whose time's worth more. Well, you know that, that's that's why we have detention costs, right? Well, again, detention costs. I think everyone would prefer to not charge for detention. Let's treat each other a little better. Yep, but to unfortunately, that, that's not the way the world works. I mean, detention. Um, it, it is, is a very real cost to some companies and they start to work out how do I fix that problem? Unless you give somebody an incentive to fix the problem, they don't fix the problem. No, and uh, I think unless you have a, a clear picture of what driving a truck is, you don't have enough respect for it. If you don't have a clear picture. If you're a female truck driver, it's Everything that any male truck driver deals with, plus safety at a different level. Yep. Okay? If you're, uh, if you're a male truck driver sitting in Minnesota with uh, 11 inches of snow on the ground, waiting to walk to the shower with, you know, the sub 10 degree temperatures, 15 degree temperatures, waiting for your number to be called so you can go get your shower. If you don't, if you don't really think about what goes into the day-to-day -day operation, you don't have enough respect for what the carriers and the drivers go through. It's not easy, and I don't know that you can pay somebody enough for what the lifestyle ends up being. I want to pick up on that because I think you've hit a um, uh, important factor. We think about things in terms of showers and short-term things, but. I want to bring up a friend of mine, Brenny, who unfortunately passed away. Uh, Brenny was a truck driver for, for a good portion of his life. But the health of, of a truck driver is not particularly good because food's not particularly healthy. It's a sedentary job. It's, it frankly is high stress. Uh, yeah. 
uh, I have normal blood pressure. I came in um, and to my doctor's office for my annual physical. I'd been stuck in two wrecks on the way. I was stuck behind two wrecks on the way. And and they re- measure my blood pressure, and it's 170. I've never had a 170 blood pressure. I'm a 130 guy, a 125. So I, I, I look at this and say, these guys have got a very unhealthy and gals have a very unhealthy lifestyle, which is, in my opinion, cut people like Brenny's life short. Oh, I think there are career fields that do that. Um, you know, uh, construction uh, guys, when if they're fortunate enough to, to live long enough to retire, if you look at the statistics of how many uh, retirement checks they collect on average, it'll it'll about bring you to your knees, right? Is you say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, you worked all those years to collect seven unemployment or seven retirement checks? Yeah. Pension right. payments? It, it, it is sad. It is sad. So, but anyway, so, you know, we, we as, a, as a shipping public need to recognize, um, you know, how can we become more efficient? That's one of the things that we try and do uh, with our, our software is try and make shippers more efficient and, and there's a lot of companies who are using auto scheduler i'm not sure i'm allowed to name them all but many of them are in the top 10 cpg companies and, and so you you look at these guys these are the guys who get it right, right. they understand right and, and not everybody gets it so the real bigger question is how do we get to the next level of of folks and say hey you need to understand that as a shipper, you have a responsibility to, to actually know what's going on and not have to rely on somebody who is working third shift, who frankly shouldn't be making decisions um, that, that they, they don't fully understand the, the repercussions thereof. So well, costs, yes. <laughs> costs, both, both real and human, right? Thomas, I hate to cut you off. Uh, We want to pick this up next week because we're running out of time. Thanks for watching. Stay in your lane. Brought to you by Triple T Transport. Continue watching on the next episode of the Stay in Your Lane podcast.